So we're gonna go ahead and open the box and see what we got in here. So it looks like there's a breaker on top and it says failure to use a breaker will avoid the warranty. We want to be sure and change that breaker. The breakers match the motor and we want to be sure and change it so we don't have a problem with burning the motor up. I'll pull the shaft out. I'm gonna set that down. Looks like a instruction manual for the timer and a warranty card. I'll set that to the side. There it is. This riser's close to the surface. What I'm worried about is when it rains, water getting in there and flooding the system, getting up over the motor and possibly ruining the motor. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a, a caulking gun and I'm gonna caulk it real good all the way around here and fill this all the way up with caulk. And then I'm gonna put this short riser on here. I'm gonna go ahead and put that short riser on there like that. I don't have to worry about it leaking. And then I'll put my lid back on there and we're ready to go. There's two Allen screws on here. I've got my 530 seconds Allen wrench. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen them up a little bit. It's a nice tight fit. Just tighten them up a little bit. It slid on there real good. It's pretty simple to put together. Okay. So now we're gonna install it. I'm gonna take the old one out. I went to, in the house so I cut the main breaker in the panel box that goes to the timer and then feeds the air to, I don't want to take any chances on the timer kicking on on me or something if there's a problem. So we just take the lid off, put it to the side, so I know I have no power because I checked it with my meter and I also shut that main breaker off. So I'm just going to set this to the side. And we'll put this other one in there. Got a handle to, to grab it with to set it in place. And when, when I put it in there, I'll make sure it fits tight, which it does. Now that we've got it in there, I'm going to go in and turn the breaker back on and work on the timer side of it. And then we're going to check with our meter to be sure we have proper power. So I'm in the house here now. We're ready to go ahead and get the power to the unit. But when that red light's on, that means that the air is not working. It doesn't mean it's working fine. So I'm going to reset this circuit breaker so that I now have power going through the timer and out to the aerator. So we've reset it. Now we want to take this off. If you don't know anything about electric, don't mess with it. Have somebody else do it. So there we got 121 coming in. Okay. The timer is on automatic, which means it's running through the through the uh, through the actual timer itself. There's automatic, off, and continuous. Even though there's an off on this switch, if you're working on that thing out there, I wouldn't trust it. I'd shut the breaker off in the main panel. Okay, so it's on automatic, which means it's running through the timer. Each one's going to be different. You may or may not have one. I'm sure. So the timer's on the off cycle. I'm going to turn it, and now it's on the on cycle. We have the same voltage coming into the timer as we have going out, so we know the timer's good. And we can turn this, and you don't want to do it too many times, but you can see now it's on the off cycle. If you turn this fast, it'll trip the mini breaker. Now even with the new unit, the Flag Air High Torque HT unit, it says to change this mini breaker. So we're going to show you how to do that in just a minute. But the first thing we're going to do, here's the power, this front one is the power coming from the panel box. We're going to shut that power off. Okay, so the power's gone. We're going to double check going out of the timer. Okay, we have no power. It's safe now. So then we'll take the panel out and see if we can uh, get that breaker changed. We'll take a pair of pliers. We'll loosen this nut so when we get on the back side, we can change that breaker. I'll go ahead and turn this to the back side. There's two sets of uh, leads that go to this thing that operate to the timer or to bypass it through the switch. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them off just like this and take that breaker out of there. And we'll put the new one in. Pretty, pretty easy to do. Okay, we tighten that up. 
plug them back on there. Okay. And then put it back in place. Tighten the nut. And we'll turn the power back on and see what we have. We have 122, 21 volts there. Nothing going out. We need to turn our switch on to auto so it runs through the timer or to continuous if you want to run all time. Nothing going out. Let's go ahead and turn our timer until the eccentric hits. And now we have 121. So we know we have the same thing going out of the timer as we have going into it. So we're good with that. Then we're going to go out here and we'll check it on continuous. And it's working fine. We'll put our cover back on here. So now we're going to go out to the editor and check our voltage out there. So I've done everything in the house, check the timer, change the mini breaker. So now I'm going to check it and see what kind of power I have here. If the plug ends bad, I'm thinking you ought to replace it. I would, but we'll see what we got for power coming out of this. And I have the same amount of power here as I had in the uh, home at the timer. If you have less power, there's a pretty good chance you have a bad wire under the ground. You need to address that. You don't want to ruin the motor. So then we're going to go ahead and just put this in a, a way so it doesn't rub and, and uh, rub a hole through this wire if we get things on the shaft. And we're going to plug it in. It's sucking good air. I can see the bubbles down in there. So it's putting air into there. We'll go ahead and put the lid back on it. Okay. Now it's gonna, it'll stink for a couple days if that air has been out because you're converting it from anaerobic bacteria to aerobic. So it's gonna give you some odor for a couple days. That's normal.